Hi everyone. Today we're going to discuss about the log box, auto log box, how to import customer payments or customer receipts by using the auto log box. So ideally I already did the same video previously, but uh, due to some reasons it got corrected. Uh, that's what again I'm doing the same video. So let's get into the requirement. Yeah. So what are the prerequisites are required in order to import customer payments or receipts? So here you can see these are the prerequisites. Logbox number, bank origination number, receipt method, receipt source, bank account, and import type. Yeah. So these are the basic things which we need to have and also customers, customer information, right? So these all the things can be taken care of by the, like when you implement the logbox process. So here logbox number will be provided with a bank and that's the same bank organization number also and receipt number, uh, receipt method we can create it, source we can create it and account also we can create from our end. Okay, once these things are in the place, then we can start importing the customer receipts from the bank. I meant to say by using auto log box. So let's get into the ABD template, which I downloaded from the Oracle repository. So this sheet is contained of the uh, nine plus one. One is that in uh, instructions and uh, CSV generation and rest everything talking about the auto log box format. So transmission uh, here, record number one. These are the things like, you know, it will be identified the log box formats. So what data will be representing about the which record? That's what it is saying about. Record number one, record number two. Likewise, we have up to nine. In this, all the things is, the major thing is number six. Record number six is the most important thing to populate the customer receipt details against transaction. I mean to say, yeah, trans against the transactions, we can see the all the receipt information in the record number six sheet. So here already I provided the, all the required information. The delivery C star symbol, those are the mandatory fields. Even though some fields are optionally, we need to produce the, the data which is required. So here you can see deposit date and uh, transmission, sorry, destination bank account, origination uh, number, Likewise, logbus header. Logbus header should have the all the information like you know what is the batch count and what is the batch or total amount and records. Likewise, it says that like you know, batch count is one and uh, under that how many records we have either thousand or two thousand or five thousand. But there are hundred fifty. What is the count it is? For that, what is the total value of the logbus batch? I mean to say header. Okay, and uh, batch header. The batch header also says that like we need to provide the batch name and the log bus uh, receipt method, number and deposit date, the specific format. Here you can see RRMMDD. This uh, the, the same format only the system will allow you to create a receipt. Overflow. So this is now it is not required as we are not like you know, doing anything over for the payments. As I mentioned, record number six. Here you can see batch name, item number, remittance amount, and then a receipt number, receipt date, and customer account number. So here you can see the customer account number will represent about the who is the customer again is this particular receipt and transactions. So open here transaction invoices. And W column. From the W column onwards, we can provide the transaction numbers. Again, it'll be reset. So till here, till upgrade amount is the right. Till here, we can provide the, all the information. Again, it will start from the transaction reference number two. Till here, it is represent about the completely one transaction details. <clears throat> okay. So then move on to record number seven. Record number seven, nothing but as a batch dialer, which is associated with the, your batch header. Similarly, logbox trailer should be associated with the logbox header. 
the same information we need to provide here. Similarly, transmission trailer should be mapped with the your transmission header. Likewise, okay. I already given the, all the information here, which is required. And then go to here, click on generate CSC file. Once you click on this one, the system will automatically generate in this way. Here you can see the sheet name called as a AR logbox import. So this is the format up to one to nine, right? We can see the, all the information what we have given the, the multiple sheets in the sheet, right? So this is the format which Oracle will be supporting us to import the customer payments and get into the application. Here we can have the two ways. One is that either you can go ahead and uh, import the file into UCM server, or we can directly run the program from the ESH jobs. Here already I, I provide that. One second, yeah. So here you can choose the file, which I have here, just save, and like I provide the account name, fin receivables import. import just say okay once you click on save okay then automatically this will be placed under the ucm server right so now what i will do okay this early i did this one right just i will go on here click on your fin just i will go search for it sorry i give an export uh, i need to give import actually yeah. Now you can see here, this is my user ID. Here you can see file name, air logbox import. This is what I did in the previous session, right? Okay, so likewise, you can search and you can upload the file in the UCM server. Once we upload the file into UCM server, which is nothing but a universal content manager, go to navigation again. Okay? Click on schedule process. Here we can run the job called as a process receipts through auto lock box. Okay. So once you select this one, save okay. And here you can see it got pick the file and process the receipts. You can see here process receipts through lock box. And then this is the parent job. On top of that, we can see the child jobs got triggered. Says that lock box sub processes and a post receipt batch and then finally log box validation report this is the most important report where you can go and look at the data whether our all the research card created or not created by clicking this one output and delivery here you can see republish if you go and click on here you can go and access the the execution report i mean to say validation report or you can go and click on here also you can get the file so this is where you can do the like you know to see either all the receipts are created or not created okay and now go to the home page go to accounts receivables taskbar here you can see these three will be talking about the logbox related information the for in the last one transmission history here you can see, so this is what I imported. Uh, date is today's date, count is eight, control count is eight. It means that control count is nothing but as a your everyday template sheet. And here you can see the value 1100 and count is one in one, receipt got created, validator is done and amount is this much. Okay, why it is showing as out of balance is that there is a some $22 are unapplied due to some discount is eligible for this customer that's what it is showing as a out of out of balance here just say done is it search with the date today's date yeah so this is the receipt which i loaded into the application as i mentioned that unapplied amount is 22 dollars because there is a some discount is eligible for this customer 
that's why it is not applied. Just click on that receipt. You can see the like, you know, in this, in this window. <clears throat> total entered amount is that 1100. Accounted amount also same and total applied amount. So I never done anything right from my side to like you know, apply on the invoice. But based on the configuration, what we did in the there is a checkbox, right? Where it is saying as a auto apply. Uh, we enable the checkbox over there, right? So based on that, the system will understand to apply the receipts again is the eligible transactions in the application. So here you can see unapplied amount $22. And now <clears throat> I can ask this receipt. What are the transactions that applied? Here you can see apply, sorry, application, study, and activity. So under the application tab, you can see there are a couple of uh, tabs here which is available. Here you can see view remittance reference details. Click on that. It will show you receipt match by transaction number, uh, reference number. This is the uh, transaction number and uh, reference amount is that the total amount of the receipt, the particular one. I mean, it's the transaction uh, value and entry method. What method we uh, operate the receipt? That is called logbox because we import the receipt through logbox, right? That is why it is showing as a uh, logbox here. If it is manual, it will show as the manual here. Similarly, you can see other one also. The same way of that. And complete last transaction. It says that logbox, right? So this is how we can see that. So I don't know why it is not picking there, but that is the way it is showing. You can see here, if you want, you can add some more information here, something where you can see it's not required now. So this is how we can import the customer receipts by using the auto logbox and apply the again is transactions. And now finally go to the action, run create accounting in the drop mode. I do not want to transfer this accounting entry at this point of time to my GL account. That's where I kept it a drop mode and running the create accounting program. Ideally in the real time also. So ideally like, you know, we'll not be running anything from our end. This everything should be taken care by the either client IT team or first priority should be business team. And then client IT team will be taking care of this activity. So as being as a consultant, we need to work on the any issues comes when they run the create accounting program or the importing receipts that time only you can go and pitch in and troubleshoot the issue to provide the solution for them so now you can see the accounting interest got generated for this one just go and click on view accounting so what are the accounting interest got generated so here you can you need to understand event account class and the debit and credit amount here you can see receipt created is the event class class is that uh cash Total value is that 100, 1100, and a discount is 22. This this will be picking, picking from where? We just, I think you guys are aware of, right? So it will be picking from the uh, your receivable activities. When you define the, there we can define this particular code combination for the NN discount. And here you can see receipt created, receivables, and receivables debit, and total. Here you can see unable cash 22 rupees. It is 22 dollars totally. It nullifies the respective balances. Here you can see there is no only batch got created. The reason being, so this entry we ran into the draft mode, right? So now that's the reason this entry has not yet been transferred to GL. Now what I can do? You can see the status also dropped here. So now what I will do? I'll go and run this program again. Post to ledger. When you run the create accounting. Post to ledger, I kept it as a one. Just now go and click on view accounting again. See the difference between previous and now. The status it is showing as a now final. Previously it was as a dropped. And <clears throat> click, uh, click on here, expand it. Okay, no worries. Just you can call, uh, call out this oh, where it is. Yeah, receipt number. Save and close. Again, reopen the invoice. 
I'm going to say reset, sorry, reset. Click on action, go to view accounting. Now you can see line description. So this would be transferred to your GL account. So the batch here, here you can see the batch, line description batch. So when we see this kind of like an information, that means that this particular entries got transferred to GL account from the sub ledger. So that is how we need to understand it. So this is where like, you, know, you can easy to identify. Okay, this description will be based, showing based on the your description rule what we defined it. Okay, that is a difference. When you see the status as a final, it doesn't mean that this completely transferred to GL account. And more information I just I want to provide here. Under the application, we see that what data is available and go to the activity. See here the activity and the activity, we can see the all the summary of the information. Transaction numbers, activity class is that invoice, type is invoice, activity amount thousand, uh, discount is the minus two dollars, and this is the invoice value <clears throat> status. Applied accounting date is that accounting date, so on so date, and the status is this is the one activity happened under the which business unit this customer and activity happened. You use one business unit. Likewise, likewise, you can see all the information under the activity tab and history. History in the sense you can see that receipt information, status is cleared, and the date is so today's date, accounting date, today date, entered amount thousand hundred, and accounting amount also. 100. So this is how we can understand the complete receipt information on the screen, what we are showing here. If you are going to add manually to apply the receipt against any transactions, you can go and click on add open receivables here. Here you can search for the reference number. If you have any specific reference number, you can provide it, click on search and get the information over here. So this is how we can use the auto log box. Save and close. Done. Yeah. Thanks for watching my video. Please do subscribe and uh, like, you know, share and like and uh, do other things. Thanks for watching my video once again and wait for another like, you know, couple of good videos from my side on the uh, receivable topics. And also uh, really appreciated if you're a uh, comment any of the topics which you needed definitely i will focus on it to make a videos further thank you